privilege of spending the semester thinking through some questions and ideas and doing experiments. Um, we are going to read in reverse alphabetical order, which means that Victor Yates is going to begin. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm going to read from a book project that I've been working on, and it's currently titled A Love Like Blood. I'm reading from chapter one, so um, there's not a lot that I have to tell you about. Um, but I'll tell you that the year is 1998, so this is before digital cameras, and the family that I'm going to read about, they live in the suburbs of Detroit and the suburb is called Beverly Hills. Chapter one. My first language was Somali, then Spanish, then English. Although I am not fluent in Spanish, the first Spanish words I learned were colors. When I refer to the color red, I use the Spanish word because in English, it sounds similar to my father's name. The color is a constant in my life. Red, darkroom lights. Red, editing pencils. Red, lens cleaner. And redness in my father's eyes. Standing in the red walled room, I relish the feel of removing my camera from its polyester resting place. I hold the body the way father taught me so that it becomes part of my body. My right hand curls into the smooth hand grip. My left hand cradles the Nikon, gripping the lens, and I tuck my elbows into my sides. My eye moves to the viewfinder. Then I take a gentle but deep breath. Schlick, schlick. A faraway shot. This is the practice shot to prepare myself to ask the curly-haired boy who is flipping through my portfolio if I can photograph him. Our new house in Beverly Hills, Michigan is more spacious than our prior apartment. This living room might be about 10 times the size of our old apartment. The donated floral print couch, two matching love seats, lamps, and a water-stained coffee table are buried behind boxes on the rental truck. Three cardboard boxes close to me are labeled dark room chemicals, kitchen and photo albums. Immediately underneath photo albums in parentheses is Karsten's room. 30 minutes ago, I pulled out my faux leather portfolio from the last box. You're probably the only 17 year old that has one of these, Brett says, with his head down. You're probably right, I say. Making myself as tiny as possible, I move Brett into portrait. He is focused on a black and white Polaroid that I took of my ex-girlfriend. Maybe Brett has a question about the girl. However, I hope he is thinking about the photographer. Before I tap the shutter button, I look up, down, and beside Brett, checking if anything in the background needs to be pulled forward. I search the small viewfinder and turn the camera slightly so that the Somali flag draped on a box is not in the frame. A colorful magnet had fallen out of the box onto the floor and is still there. Later, when I develop this image of Brett, the magnet will look like a dark speck. Brett's beige face, tanned arms, and cream shirt with the oatmeal carpet are a study in contrast against the wall. The wall above the fireplace is upholstered with two shades of white, myrrh, and church lace, in shiny stripes and dull stripes, a design detail that I would expect to see in a lavish hotel lobby. The house, far from being lavish, is the oldest home here, the outdated facade stands out on Evergreen Street. This neighborhood could be in the other Beverly Hills in California, with its extravagant homes, manicured green lawns, and an air 
of plastic bourgeois exclusiveness. The length and shadow of my arm cuts across the shadow of his body cast on the wall, making a cross. Through the camera lens, I study the contours of Brett's shape to learn more about him. His athletic frame, the veneer of toughness, and his bullish face, along with the white paint splatter on his denim hands, show the opposite of what my father screams to me that other men are. Vaginas with mustaches. The word pretty could not be assigned to Brett, like a job title. Ruggedly handsome is not appropriate either. Manify is a better word. He is the type who, when I see him, I think smells of beer, cigarettes, and cheap aftershave. The masculine men I am thinking about are always significantly older as well. Brett is just one year older than I am, though. From the neck down, his feminine mannerisms and the way he crosses his arms, hands over biceps, inform me that he likes men. Every man has a story, and his picture should tell part of that story, the mantra that my father forced into me. What will Brett's picture say? Young laborer piercing the past with an infinite stare. This introduction frozen on film, I can re-enter as long as I keep the image hidden from my father. We're alike in different ways, Brett says. What do you mean? We both work with our hands. I work with my dad in construction. You work with yours in photography. If you ever want to go to the art museum in Detroit, let me know. The DIA? I would live in a broom closet there. All those gorgeous silver prints. I can't believe I live next to a family of photographers now. Two of us are photographers. My older brother wants nothing to do with it. My younger brother wants to be a kid. I didn't have a choice. I can tell your older brother and dad don't get along, but you seem to. I don't have a choice with that either. Yes, you do. My father's Somali. You'll learn quickly. The photo of the wedding dress and tux suspended in the air and the two grooms holding a cross is genius. How did you do that? With lighting clamps. I secured the dress and tuxedo onto a metal rod. Then I asked two men in a wedding party we were shooting to pose for me. Your dad must be proud of your work. He hasn't seen that picture. Why? He'd rip it in half. Anything he doesn't approve of, he destroys. How does it make you feel to be reminded of what you can't do? What do you mean? Have your father photograph your wedding. I shift my attention to the front door. My father could walk in on us. Fortunately, he does not engage in conversation with men under the age of 22. He speaks at them. Father wandered off next door with my brothers and Brett's blonde father. Earlier, Brett and his father brought over a collapsible hand truck to help us with the move. Can I take your photograph, I asked Brett, to avoid answering his question. Yes. Turned, standing in profile, with the shutter speed narrow, Brett will appear bright and well exposed. The background will come out dark, almost black, pulling out a wild ferocity in him, which will contrast with his feminine mannerisms. Because Brett is mixed, his skin drifts between tan and light brown, depending on how much sun touches his geometrical face. In the corner of the frame, I, I catch the light blue Somali flag with the five-pointed white star of unity. Like most religious converts, there is intermixing. We live in a household that has ceramic saint statuettes alongside a Quran wrapped in green silk that belonged to my grandfather. My camera clicks. 
and from my vantage point I watch Brett cross his arms. If father could see him now, he would say, that's girly. Wait, I hold up one finger pausing Brett to take another picture and drag out this forbidden moment that we have alone for as long as I can. The first shot a photographer takes of the subject is always a throwaway. My father taught me that. I learned my best camera secrets from him. Rubbing his hands together, Brett grins as if he's about to say something devilish. Do I have to marry you to see these pictures? We both laugh at this understanding between us. A straightforward and close-up shot of his hand, clearly focused. That is the photograph I need. His hand is the detail that reveals we are native sons. As native sons, we work out of the disorder of life in order to achieve beauty. But like a Nile crocodile, heavily armed and quiet until it attacks, father creeps up on us. You. Your father wants to see you, father says to Brett. The coldness of father's you is enough for me to realize my error. A photographer never stops looking. As the front door shuts, I know two things. The closest exit is a window that may or may not be locked. And as long as I have a camera in my hand, my father won't hurt me too much. I grip the camera tighter. Did that boy just say he wanted to marry you and you laughed? It wasn't like that. You have a girlfriend, what's wrong with you? It wasn't what you think. So you know what I think? Yes, I do. Father slaps me across the face, bringing me back to the reality of breathing under a beast's power. Whatever direction his weight pulls me in, I must follow, even if it is underwater. Thank you.